the Penguins notched a big win over the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday night, and a big reason for that was the play of goaltender Alex Nedeljkovic. Your Locked On Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am one of your hosts, Hunter Hodes. You can follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Joined by my co-host, Patrick Damp. You can follow him on Twitter at Synonym for Wet. And you can follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. Of course, thank you all so much for making this your first lesson slash watch of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. And finally, today's episode is brought to you by Fans Will Make Every Moment More. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So Penguins 4, Hurricanes 1. A day after you and I both said that it was pretty unlikely that the Penguins were going to win this game against one of the league's best teams. The Penguins told both of us to shut the hell up as they go out there and get a pretty convincing win over the Hurricanes and assure themselves of at least a season split against the Hurricanes. The Penguins won both games in Pittsburgh, but lost both games on the road in Raleigh. And the first thing I want to discuss when it comes to this game is the play of Alex Nedeljkovic. He was tremendous throughout And for someone who has struggled in the month of March, honestly, both goaltenders for the Penguins have really struggled in the month of March. It was nice seeing him get back to basics and get back to the level that we saw from him for the most part for the first half of the regular season for the Penguins. The goalie that we saw start lighting it up in October, November, even December a little bit as well. He was square to every shooter. He was not giving up too many rebounds to any Carolina shot that was coming from the point. And you all have access to the data. The Carolina Corsis were in full effect for this. They were firing everything they could from the point. The Penguins were just doing a great job defensively by boxing out some of those Carolina shooters to making sure they don't follow that up with high danger chances. We'll get into that a little bit later. But a play from Nedeljkovic when he needed to make a big save, especially in the second period, numerous times the Hurricanes did have quite a few high danger chances. He was there to bail the team out. And I think he's the player of the game for the Penguins. I know Paul Yarvey was amazing. I know Brian Russ was great. Cindy Crosby had another three point game. We'll get into those a little later on for the show. But to me, player of this game was Alex Nedeljkovic. It was great seeing the goaltending come back to the first half of the year for him. He certainly was. He, he was. he is the first star from last night's game. You look at how many saves he made. He gave up one goal. I believe he made 38 saves, if I got the numbers correct. And you're right. It was the Carolina Corsis last night because you go into natural stat trick, you look at the advanced numbers, and Carolina had 69% nice of the shot attempts in the game. And... The thing I observed, and I texted you about this, was you look back at that game, and yes, it does say that the Hurricanes had 10 high danger chances throughout the game. All of those came in the first two periods. There were two in the first, eight in the second, but even more so than that, this was a Carolina team that just shoots the puck from everywhere and anywhere. Because I watched the game last night and I'm thinking, okay, Carolina's getting a lot of zone time here, but they're not really getting anything out of it. They're shooting from the point, but the Penguins are doing a good job either blocking it, Nadelkovich is stopping it and covering it, or if there is any sort of rebound or scramble, the Penguins are clearing it out and there's no second attempt. So the Penguins to me last night, along with a great performance from Alex Nadelkovich, actually played a very stubborn defensive game and they were genuinely great in the defensive zone all night long. I agree. And in two of those three periods, the Penguins only gave up two high danger chances at all situations in the third period alone, as you mentioned, no high danger chances for the hurricanes. And that was the most surprising part to me because 
we've talked ad nauseum about the Penguins' struggles to defend a lead in the third period throughout the season. It's become a common meme, it feels like, on social media. Well, oh, they have a lead heading into the third period? Oh, it's only going to be a matter of time before they blew it. But every time the Hurricanes came into the offensive zone in the third period, I was saying to myself, it just doesn't look like they're going to score at all because the Penguins are doing a great job defensively keeping them to the outside. And yeah, you're letting a lot of point shots through, but those are easy saves for Ndelkovich. I thought Ned was especially great in the second period where the Hurricanes were really pushing after the Penguins opening goal. You know, they're able to tie it a little later on in that period before taking the lead in the final stages of that second period. But that was when I thought he was truly on top of his game. Yeah, he had to make a couple of good saves in the third period, but he also wasn't fully tested as much in that period. Again, I still think he's the player of the game. He was tremendous. 39 saves on 40 shots is no small feat. But we do have to shout out the Penguins' defensive work in this game. I think that's one of the best games they've defended all year, especially in two of those three periods. Without a doubt. And even the only goal that they gave up came because... Marcus Pedersen was involved in a freaky collision and essentially was down and out and out of the play. So the Penguins were essentially at five on four in a broken situation with an injured player. So you can't even really fault their defense for the goal against. It was just it was a lucky bounce, by the way. Yeah, it was a tough break. And you look at back at that and you say, OK, if that's the only goal they give up is a, an unlucky moment where one of their best defensemen gets caught in a bad collision, you'll take that almost sight unseen. And I looked at last night's game tape, and the biggest thing for me was, that, like I kind of started to hint at, everything Carolina had in the offensive zone was from the outside. We talked about it in the preview. One of their big offensive uh, trademarks is that they take shots from the point. They hope for net mouth scrambles, rebounds, deflections, tips, or if nothing else, they hope to draw more defenders up top so they can open up the down low areas. But the Penguins didn't fall into that trap. They either block shots, they cleared the front, and they stayed positionally sound, which is something we haven't seen them do a lot this year. Agreed. One of the biggest things that I noticed was that the Penguins were doing a great job of boxing out Carolina's best players when those point shots would come in from someone like Brett Pesci, Jacob Slave, and Brent Burns, whoever was out there defensively for the Hurricanes. And the Penguins were able to take those small rebounds that were coming off Nadelkovich and being like, okay, we're just going to send this to the corner. You're not going to be generating high danger chances that way. And it was like that throughout this game. Yeah, it got a little bit dicey at times in the second period. I mean, the Hurricanes had all eight high danger chances in the second period compared to zero for the Penguins. But Nadelkovich was able to make those saves. And then in the first and third periods where the Penguins are playing a bit better, at least in my opinion, they're able to really box out those Carolina top players, whether it's Sebastian Alho, Marty Natchez, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Jake Ensel, of course, et cetera, et cetera. I liked how the Penguins were able to force the Hurricanes players to the wall quite often when they were entering the offensive zone. One play that really stood out to me, it was at the end of the second period and Eric Carlson, and I know he's been a lightning rod for a lot of fans this season. I, I understand a little, at least a little bit, but Kuznetsov was coming in with the puck on his stick and Carlson played it beautifully. He forced him to the wall, pinned him there. He was able to steal the puck, get it to Marcus Pedersen, and they were able to get out of their own zone to get to the second intermission with the lead. And that is textbook type stuff from the Penguins. And they were doing that for most of this game. Yeah, they were. And on the other end of it, on Brian Rust's goal, I got to say, Rod the Bod is probably not at all happy with Pesci because when Rust got into that scoring area, and I know that shot blocking has evolved a little bit in the NHL. Guys actually have more padding, so they turn to the side now rather than directly on. Brett Pesci came very close to pulling a flamingo and just lifting his leg up and kind of let Brian Rust have nearly an uncontested shot on net. And if you're playing on a Rod Brindamore coach team, that is unacceptable. He's not torts level where he's going to make stars and everybody block shots, but he is known for having a disciplined, stingy system. And what Brett Pesci did is the antithesis of what he preaches. 
Right. If he were in position there, that probably would have been a block shot and that puck does not go in the back of the net. But, you know, kudos to Brian Rust. He had a shoot first mentality there. He gave, gave the Penguins the lead. And now that's his 23rd goal of the season. I know he's been injured a bit this season. He's only played in 51 games, but he's had a really nice year overall. And as I said, to start this week's worth of episodes, he is one of the top players on this team that plays his tail off every single night. And it's just been a really great year from Rust overall. He's a Swiss army knife. And I understand why they're respecting his no movement clause. Maybe he drops off a cliff in the next couple years. It's entirely possible. Time is undefeated, but that's a guy that helps you win championships. He's done it with this team twice, but at the same time, when you have a guy who can play in your top six, he can play in your bottom six. He can play on your power play. He can play on your penalty kill. He can play in six on five situations. Regardless, you hold on to that guy because he's worth his weight in gold. hundred percent. And I think he's still going to be on this team come next season. I mean, yeah, things can change over the summer if potentially he wants out or the Penguins are maybe looking to move him for a big return because I do think his value is really high right now with the year he's having, but I still don't see the team moving on from him, at least right now. But that's just my take on that. But I think that'll do it for this first segment. Coming up in the second segment, Pat and I have to discuss the kids that played for the Penguins last night, especially Jesse Pugliarvi, because he was tremendous. And also, what are our thoughts on Sam Poulin's debut this season? We're going to give you all our takes on that in the second segment. But before we get to that, we got to tell you all about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you are get your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, we're back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am one of your hosts, Hunter Hodes, joined by my co-host, Patrick Dam. So, Outside of Alex Ndelkovich and the Penguins' really stingy play in their own zone against the Hurricanes, we got to discuss Jesse Pugliarvi. By far his best game as a Penguin last night. I thought he was great along the walls. He was great below the dots. He was a forechecking menace for the Penguins. And of course, that release that he had to open the scoring just shot out of a cannon coming off the bench. And I will say, we have to keep it fair on the show. For as much as we have dragged Ryan Graves this season because he has not been good, he provided a great screen in front of Peter Kachekov, and Kachekov had no chance to stop that Pugliarvi missile. I even think without the screen, that puck was probably going to go in the back of the net, but that was a really nice screen overall by Graves. And I thought also Graves was pretty decent in this game as a whole. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later on. And I thought Pugliarvi was also a menace hitting wise. He was laying the boom overall. And I'm really fascinated and intrigued to see what he can do heading into next season. He's going to have a full off season to fully train. He's not going to have to worry about another surgery. God forbid, hopefully he doesn't get hurt in the final 10 to 11 games here. But if he can stay healthy, I think there could be some bigger things going forward for Pugliarvi for next season. And that's also now goals in back-to-back games for him too. But by far, overall, his best game as a Penguin in this one. There needed to be exactly one conversation today at practice or team meetings or whatever you want to call it today at UPMC Lemieux between Mike Sullivan and Yessi Pugliarvi. And that conversation should have been, don't leave your locker. Because... The rest of the way out, he should have a sweater. He should not be out of the lineup the rest of the way. And I understand it's only two games. It's a small sample size. He has been up and down. I know that we've been calling for him to play more. And we do, like you always say, we have to be honest. And I'm not going to pretend like he's been a world beater or elite, but he's been effective. And the last two games, he has genuinely been one of the five best Penguins players in two games. And 
he earned last night, I believe, a look the rest of the way out. Because, like you said, the goal was beautiful. We can't, we can never discount a goal. They're what win games. But he was in the corners all night long. He was throwing hits. He was in on the four check. He was blocking shots. He was playing physical in the defensive zone. And again, I have been beating this drum since the Jake Gensel trade. If there's one thing this Penguins team has missed the last few years, it's a couple of hard-nosed guys. They're, I'm not talking goons. I'm not talking big, slow guys who do nothing but hit, but they need guys who will crash and bang and play hard, as Steve Dangle always likes to say, makes your night long. Just like Michael Bunting in a way as well. And another thing they've really missed, especially these last couple of years, more youth. And I liked the bottom six as a whole last night with the kids that played overall, even outside of Puyarvi, Sam Poulin made his Penguins debut for this season, at least. And while I don't think he fully stood out, I thought he was just okay in this game. He didn't have too many moments that wowed me. You got to give him a little bit of time. It's only one game. See what he can do on Thursday against the Columbus Blue Jackets, a team that's obviously lower than the Penguins in the standings. I don't need him to wow me every single shift that he's out there, but I still thought he was fine overall. Didn't make any mistakes defensively in his own zone, no dumb turnovers or anything like that. What did you see from Poulin in his debut for this year? Main thing is he did not look out of place. He he didn't look like he was overwhelmed. He didn't look like he was somebody that wasn't quite ready for a call up. I will say this though, should he remain with the organization into next season, he has to spend this entire summer on skating because I was not impressed by his skating. I, I I'm not, I don't think he's a bad skater, I just think he needs to add a step and he needs to get a little bit more agile on his feet just because this is not the American Hockey League. And I don't say that in a derogatory manner. He has been very good in the American Hockey League, and that's no small feat. There are a lot of guys who get to that level and can't hack it. But then the same thing happens when guys come up to the NHL from the AHL. But the tools are there for him to be an effective middle six forward in the National Hockey League but he has to get a little bit faster and a little bit more agile. But overall, I don't have any complaints about his his game last night against the Carolina Hurricanes. But again, the one knock that has existed on him since he's come into the organization has been skating, and it's still there. I was going to add that, uh, if you didn't say it, just because even before he got drafted, one of the biggest complaints that you know people had was his skating. And if he's able to work on it during this summer, I do think he has a really good shot at potentially making this team next year. I mean, we all know Paul is going to be on the team. Drew, Drew O'Connor will be there. Valtteri Pustin should be a lock, I think, to be on this team next year as well. But I, I agree with you. Overall, there were a couple of shifts, I felt like, in the first period where the fourth line was actually generating some offense with Paul and Gruden and Poulin came I wouldn't say really close to scoring, but he was right around the net mouth area. And that's where I want him to go for most of his shifts. Be like Michael Bunting a little bit and go to the dirty areas and try to get yourself a greasy goal or two, excuse me. And that's what I liked about his game, at least in the first period of this one, was that he wasn't afraid of going at least a couple of times. I want to see more of that down the stretch here as we get closer to game 82. There's always hockey justice for guys who play an honest game, guys who aren't afraid to do those little things. It may not pay off tremendously. You may not end up being a 15, 20, 25 goal scorer, but you can pop in 5, 10, 12 goals. You can be an effective player that leads, does things that lead to offense. So for, for those guys, especially those three last night, the more we see of that from them, the better. Agreed. And speaking of one of the other kids that, is in the light up Drew O'Connor. I mean, again, we all know that he has established himself as a full-time bona fide NHL player. I think in a perfect world that he is a good third liner on a cup contending team. He did struggle a bit last night. There were multiple instances in this game where the Penguins had an odd man rush going into the offensive zone 
and he fumbled the puck. Or a couple other times, he had a couple of bad turnovers. Just not a good game from him overall. But then, of course, he had a great individual effort to ice the game in the third period to get that empty net goal. The first one hit the post, but then he was able to follow that up, put the puck in the back of the net to make it 3-1. to one. Even though he played poorly overall, it was nice seeing him have at least one good shift to end that game as he, he continues to have, overall, a really nice season. For sure. And we have definitely lamented the way Mike Sullivan likes to keep playing guys, even on nights where they don't have it. And last night was a rare instance where it pays off because his empty net goal wasn't anything spectacular. It was just pure, unadulterated hard work. And a guy like that usually gets his due. And yeah, he had an off night last night, but he has put together a nice little season as as a middle six forward for the penguins so it was nice to see him get rewarded for that and the, i i know that you know there's been a lot of discourse over it on hockey twitter these days but there is no substitute for hard work and drew o'connor showed us that last night on a night where he was struggling all he did was kept it simple straightforward speed hard work and he gets him an empty net goal to seal a very hard-earned win by the penguins Agreed, and I'm sure he's going to be much better on Thursday against the Columbus Blue Jackets. I don't think because he's going to have that kind of showing that he had against Carolina for most of that game before the empty net goal heading into tomorrow's game at home as well. But I think that'll do it for this second segment. Coming up to end the show, it's Wednesday. You all know what that means. It's Warrior Helmet Wednesday. And I think Pat and I both agree on who we're giving the Warrior Helmet to. Hint, it's a player that we really haven't discussed much during this episode, even though we probably should have by now. But before we get to that, we got to tell you all about FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. New right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick on who's going to win it all, especially now that we are into the sweet 16 for this tournament. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college troops until they cut down the nets. All right, we're back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am one of your hosts, Hunter Hodes, joined by my co-host, Patrick Damp. So, sir, I think I know who you are giving your warrior helmet to for this week. It is a player that has been on fire over the last two games. He has seven points in his last two games. Had a three-point night against the Hurricanes on Tuesday night. We all know you're giving your warrior helmet to Sidney Crosby. It has to. It has to go to Sid. He has woken up. He's now six points away with 11 games to go of matching in of matching a point per game pace, which would tie Wayne Gretzky for most consecutive point per game seasons, which is a incredible feat in and of itself. The other thing that I want to talk about with Sid, though, is that he is far and away about to ha- perform his best season in the face off dot his his best season to date right now was the. 20 or 2009 2010 season where he went 55.9 percent in the face-off circle right now at this moment in this season he sits at 58.7 he has been damn near automatic in the face-off circle this year and that's exactly how brian russ scored the game-winning goal last night it was a face-off win by crosby which led right to a scoring chance and puts the penguins back on top he is i think telling a lot of us to put our heads back in the sand because we are like, ah, he, he's, he knows this season's cooked. He knows that his, you know, his buddy got traded, his, his winger got traded and you know what? He had a game or two where he played like that, but Sidney Crosby is right back to doing Sidney Crosby things. He's playing at the level that we've seen him play at for almost the entire 2023, 2024 season. You're right. He had a couple of bad games, especially after, Jake got traded where it looked like he was maybe mailing in a little bit, but these last two games, again, seven points in those two games. He was a man on a mission during that game against the avalanche. I know the penguins lost that game, but that was a spectacular performance overall. And then to get two assists and then the other empty net goal in this game against Carolina, the penguins are following his lead right now. And I know they're far out of the playoff race. They're not going to be making the playoffs by the end of the season bearing 
a massive miracle, but they are still following him every night. And he continues to lead by example with this team. And another thing he continues to show, I think this entire team, the coaching staff and the organization as a whole is that, yeah, I still have quite a bit left in the tank. You want to make some changes this summer. You go ahead and do that. Bring in some younger players to help me and Gino and Chris out and potentially Eric Carlson, if he's still here as well. And I do think he's going to be there as well, but I'm still good enough to bet on heading into next season that I can try and get this team back to the playoffs. If you are able to give me at least a little bit of help, more help than I've had the last two years overall. That is what I think he's at least trying to send that message to the rest of the organization right now. And I do think he is going to get six points over the next 11 games. I'd be stunned if he didn't. Well, and to build off your point there, I also think that there probably has been a sit down between him, Dubis, probably Sullivan as well, letting them know about the plan that they kind of want to do moving forward, which is using him to shepherd in the next generation, so to speak, of Penguins. So with guys like Sam Poulan, Drew O'Connor, Yessi Pujarvi, Jack St. Ivany, and those guys, it's him kind of saying, all right, this season's frustrating. I hate that we're not making the playoffs again, but there is a standard I have set in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you guys have to understand what it is. 100%. No, I don't doubt that they've probably had some sort of that type of conversation. And if they haven't, I'm sure they would potentially have it once this season wraps up in a few weeks, and then they can get down to business with figuring out moves for the all season trade signings and all that other good stuff. But yeah, Cindy Crosby is also my pick for the Warrior helmet. If he didn't wake up really good these last two games, I think I would have given it to Brian Rush just because he's been fantastic as well. These last two games, yes, he probably would have been a prime candidate for me as well. And also Alex and Delkovich. I thought he was great against Carolina here. I know he was kind of meh against the avalanche this past weekend, but I still would have had him in consideration as well. But is there anything else you want to add about this game against Carolina, Sidney Crosby in general, before we wrap up? Uh, one last quick thing. We didn't get to it in the How About Those Kids segment. I got to give a shout out to Jack St. Ivany. He looks like he's going to be a very solid, very dependable 5'6 defenseman. He doesn't do anything overly impressive. He doesn't do anything spectacular. But watching him the last couple of games, he's always in good position. He has a very active stick and he, he constantly makes the smart and simple play. And with the Penguins sending Rue Weedle to the Rangers at the trade deadline, that's a very good replacement for him. And I'm excited to see what he does the rest of the way out. Right. It's a pretty small sample size overall. I don't want to make too many rash declarations just yet, but he's been fine in the few yeah. games that he's played so far. He's also getting some work on the penalty kill against the Hurricanes. And that's no small feat considering how good the Hurricanes power play has been. It's a top 10 unit in the league so far this season. The Penguins made that unit look pretty bad overall in that game. And he was pretty aggressive on the penalty kill, I thought. He wasn't sitting back like sometimes a couple of the other players doing the PK. He was up in everyone's face and sealing that puck and just sending it down virtually every time. And also doing a great job of pinning the puck carrier along the boards. And that allows help to come in to get the puck and then send it back down the rink the other way. So I really liked his work on the penalty kill. And yeah, he's just a steady number six. And that's all you can ask for someone who's replacing Ruedel, who is steady as they come as a number six defenseman when he was in Pittsburgh. And I think we can shout out Ryan Graves for a pretty sound performance as well. I'm sure they're going to keep putting that pairing out there for at least the next couple of games to see what they have in that pairing. And we've, all know that Graves has not been good in the top four, but you know he was fine in the bottom pairing for this one. But I think that'll do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to slash watch this episode. Pat and I will be back with another show for you all on Thursday to preview the first of two games against the Columbus Blue Jackets this weekend. This one is at home for the Penguins on Thursday. It will then go to Columbus on Saturday for the second half of the home and home, and then they won't see the Blue Jackets again until next season. But We'll be back on Thursday to preview that game. But for Patrick Camp, I am Hunter Hodes. We'll talk to you all tomorrow.